We're going to take a look at a problem real quick where we have um, three forces. And, you know, you can assume that these three forces are all pulling on the same object, um, kind of a <clears throat> three-way tug-of-war, so to speak. And um, what we're interested in finding is the net force between these three. Um, what, what I like to do, how I like to start it, is to kind of graph all three forces, put them on the um, XY plot, and help me visualize them a little bit better. So I think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'm going to do that right, right here, right beneath it. And I'm going to plot them all with the understanding that this is my zero degree mark. Um, my 100 Newton force at 75 degrees will be something like this, where that's 100, newt that's 100 Newtons, and this is 75 degrees. Um, the 66 Newtons at 155 degrees would actually, would actually be someplace over here. Um, and I'm not going to plot the 155 degrees. What I'm going to, what I'm going to mark is this angle right here, which is 25 degrees, um, 180 minus 155, which, because um, I'm going to set up my triangle based on that angle. And then the 46 newtons at um, 290 degrees would put it down around here, 46 newtons. And again, um, I'm going to be interested in that angle, which is actually just 20 degrees. That makes the math a lot easier. So I essentially have my force diagram. I essentially have my xy coordinates plotted out. Um, I'm going to now break these force vectors up into their x and y components. So um, I've got x and I've got y, um, 100 newtons, uh, 66 newtons, and then 46 newtons. And so the 100 newtons, um, it's simply 100 times the cosine of 75, 100 times the sine of 75. Uh, the 66 Newton here, if, if you didn't know, I'm looking, that's my x side of the triangle. That's my x component, kind of similar for the 100 Newton one, um, which is adjacent to the angle that I know. And if it's adjacent, then that makes this my cosine side. So for the 66 Newton one, this is going to be 66 cosine 25. It makes this 66 sine 25. I also need to include a negative sign right there for the x component since it's pointing in the negative x direction. For the 46 Newton vector, this side is my adjacent side. So this is going to be my cosine side, which is the y side. So my for my 46 Newton vector, um, you need to be a little careful. And this is 46 cosine 20, makes this 46 sine 20. And again, because that y component is going down, I'm going to make that negative. So you do have to be careful with your sines and cosines as to which is the side adjacent to the angle that you know. Now, since we're looking at net force, and that's what we want to figure out, basically what I want to do is add up all my x's, add up all my y's. That will give me the components to my resultant force. And to do that, what I'm going to first do, I'm first going to go through and I'm going to calculate um, all these sines and cosine numbers and basically make a new chart. So just give me a second to do this. So there's all my values for the sines and cosines and the actual values for the x and y components, which is going to make it a little bit easier now 
to go through and add up to get my net force values. So give me a second to do this. All right. So that's what I got once I added up all my um, x's and y's. Um, and so this is my this is my x component. This is my y component for my resultant force. And what this tells me is my x component is in the negative x direction, and my y component is in the positive y. And basically, I'm just going to plot these two. Uh, I'm going to plot the intersection of these two points, because that's my, my uh, overall force vector. Um, and I can use this triangle if I want. Right here, this is 81.3. This side is 18.2. And I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to come up with the, um, the hypotenuse value. And I get 83.3 newtons. That's the magnitude of my overall net force, 83.3 newtons. Well, I'm not done because force is a vector and it has direction. And so I also want to figure the angle for it. And when I calculate the angle, I'm going to look at that angle right there since that's inside my triangle. And to do that, we're going to look at um, inverse cosine is adjacent side over my hypotenuse. And so, doing this little bit of math, I get 12.6 degrees. Now, that's not the... So, it's, so this angle right here is 12.6 degrees. Right in there is 12.6. But that's not how I want to express my angle, because we express all angles from the positive x-axis, which is 0 degrees. So the angle I really want is that angle, the green angle, which is just 90 plus 12.6, or 102.6 degrees. So to capture my overall net force, it's going to be 83.3 newtons at 102.6 degrees. That force is the net force of these three which basically means when this when this 100 newton force 66 newton force and 46 newton force all pull on the same object it's going to respond in that type of direction with an overall force of 88.3 newtons that's kind of what the answer that we got was so that's that's the net force when you're looking at three different forces. And if you had four, it would be the same process. You just had a fourth force. Now, I want to turn the question around and, and, then, and now ask the question, if these are my three forces, what fourth force is required to bring the whole system into equilibrium? I want my... And when we're in equilibrium, all the forces are balanced. And what that means is we want, we want the net force to be equal to zero. So for the net force to be equal to zero, we need a balancing force. And we need to look at, I want to figure out what that is. We want the balancing force. Well, we can look at the net force for this information. Because the net force is basically telling me that all three of these forces are going to act like a single 88.3 Newton force in that direction. And so basically, I just want to balance that 88.3 Newton force, which means I need a force that is equal but opposite. And so an equal force means it's equal in magnitude my balancing force has to be 88.3 newtons. By opposite, it's in the opposite direction, or 180 degrees different than the other force. So what that means, I need to subtract 180 degrees from 102.6. 
which gives me a negative 77.4 degrees. Another way to express this angle is not to subtract 180 degrees, but to add it. And that puts us at 182.6 degrees. Either way is, is okay. And so, 83.3 uh, newton force at 182.6 degrees will bring these other three forces into equilibrium and into balancing them. Okay, that's the problem I just wanted to go over. Um, if you have any, uh, hopefully this was of some value. Um, good luck.